In this tutorial, I will show you how to use V-Ray lights. So if you go to your Create tab um, and go to your lights, there are a number of different lights you can use. You, you're, with V-Ray, you can use standard lights or photometric lights. Those still work within V-Ray. But you can also use V-Ray specific lights. So if you select that, you'll see there's a series of different V-Ray lights. A V-Ray IES light is a, a photo real light. So if you go to a manufacturer's website and download an IES file for a particular light, you can install that right here. If you hit the None button, you can actually browse and then find that IES file that you download from the manufacturer's website, and it will use the actual photometric data from that light to calculate how it how it uh, um, emits light. So that's a V-Ray IES. You can also use a V-Ray Sun. If you do use a V-Ray Sun, you have to also use a V-Ray physical camera. The two work in tandem. So for a V-Ray Sun, you have to use a V-Ray physical camera. For any of these other lights, you can use a standard camera or a V-Ray physical camera. But generally, I'll actually use a standard camera for any of these other lights. Um, the V-Ray light is the most useful light. So if you select that and you drag in your window, that creates basically a light plane. And you can see you can move this plane like you would any other object in a scene. Um, the size of the plane does matter. So the bigger the size of the plane, the more light will be emitted. If you select the plane, you can then go to the size and change the size, um, depending on how much light you want to be emitted from that plane. You can also change the multiplier. So if I reduce this value in the Modify tab under the Properties here, that will also reduce the intensity. So you might want to cast light over a large area and have a very large light, um, and then just reduce the multiplier. But if you're not interested in changing the multiplier, you can also just change the size of the light. You want to make sure it's casting shadows. A double-sided light means it's going to emit light in both directions. Right now, this is only going to emit light down. Um, you can also um, change you can apply a texture if you want so if you want it to emit like a projector map you can add that here as well so if we just render this really quickly you can see it'll then render light within the scene right now it's a little bit bright and it's building my light cache right now so if I cancel that um, I can change this so maybe it's not quite so bright let's go down to 10 and then re-render. You can see it's a little bit better, better now. And you can add multiple lights in a scene. Usually it's a good idea to have one dominant light and then one that's in the background kind of adding as a, uh, a fill into the scene. It's still a little bright, so I'd probably want to reduce that a little more. But that's pretty good for now. Um, after you've rendered, you want to make sure that you save the rendering. So to save an image, you hit this little uh, yellow disk here. And then in general, you want to use a TIFF file format. Um, once you select the TIFF file format and type in a name, you want to make sure you also have the store alpha channel. This will allow you in Photoshop to delete the alpha channel um, by going to load and then load selection alpha channel. So you want to make sure you have that selected if you're saving as a TIFF.